I have a new wood stove I want to share with you today. This is the titanium multi-fuel burner from Goshawk. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to point out that this stove was not sent to me for testing and review. I paid for this with my own money. So how did I find out about this stove? Why did I buy it? Well, let's talk about why I was looking for it in the first place. So uh, you may be aware of the Bush Buddy wood gas stove. It's been around quite a long time, originally made in Canada, now made in the United States. It is the standard by which most other wood gas stoves are compared. Well. Uh, they recently came out with a new version, a miniature version of the Bush Buddy in titanium. And I was really quite interested in that, except for two things. It had an $85 US price tag on it, which is not out of the question. It's just I wanted to look around before and see if there was something else I could buy first. And it had a four month lead time. So rather than invest that $85, I wanted to look around, see what else I could find. And that's how I came across this. It was simple enough. I just Googled uh, small titanium wood gas stoves and this popped up. So this is from Australia. Now what really made the decision for me on purchasing in this stove was its price. It is sold at $56 Australian dollars, which is considerably cheaper than Canadian and especially cheaper than US dollars. And that's at least at the time I purchased this. And uh, I don't know what it is now, but of course I will be providing links where you can take a look at this stove yourself. So it seemed to be very close in size to the Bush Buddy Mini. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason I bought it. So what I'd like to do now is just bring you in a little closer to give you some close-ups of the stove and we'll talk about the specifications at the same time. Then of course, I'll take it down to the fire pit and we're gonna build a fire in it. Actually, I'm gonna build two fires in it. First with wood, with uh, some sticks from the woods here, and then I brought out some wood pellets. But I wanna share with you that this is also designed to be used with an alcohol stove. And I brought that with me and I'll show you how it works, but I won't be using that. I'll give you the results of the testing I've did, but I won't be demonstrating that today. All right, so the proper name for this stove is the Titanium Multi-Fuel Burner and the model name is the Eddy-200 Pioneer. And I was mistaken on the price. It's actually $59.79 Australian. So still uh, one of the least expensive stoves on the market. Now, I'll let you know now that I did find a few other small titanium double wall wood gas style stoves. But rather than talk about those stoves in this video, because of course I don't have them, I'll put all the information about those other stoves, including the mini Bush Buddy titanium version. I'll put that all in the video description below so that if you're interested, you can look at the size comparison, the weight comparison, the costs, and as well as where they can be found for purchase. But we're going to focus on this stove for this video. So uh, let's go over the construction of the stove and then I will give you some specifications. So it is a true double wall stove, but unlike a lot of them, this wasn't pressed into shape. It wasn't a piece of titanium that was with a mold or pressed into shape. It was actually made from sheets of titanium and as you can see, the external wall, it was brought together with pop rivets. Now, I am going to assume that they are stainless steel pop rivets. I suppose they could be titanium. Originally from the color, I thought they might be aluminum pot rivets, but you can see from the discoloration that I've had quite a few fires in this. And had they been aluminum, I'm sure they would have melted by now. So the external wall is one piece, long piece of rectangular metal brought around into a circle and then pop riveted together. The internal wall is the same thing. It's another piece of metal brought around and folded into shape and again pop riveted together. So the whole assembly with little tabs is pop riveted and that's how it is brought together. There's no welds or anything on it. Now you can see it's an open bo bottom design so the fire grate is open to the ground and of course that means you do have to be conscious about where you set this down when you go to have a fire because it will uh, allow a lot of heat and some coals and ashes to drop through onto whatever surface you have it on so uh, once again that's just a caution to be aware of. Um, the, I'll show you the inside right now. So we can get it in angle. You can see triangular down pointing triangular openings all the way around the inside. Those are the secondary jets or the secondary ports for the hot air that would rise between the walls as it's heated and would come back in at that top and would reignite with the combustible wood gases that are being generated inside. 
Yeah. Uh, also of a feature are the pot stands. And they, they're designed so that they can set at two levels. You can see right now they're set at the lower level, but if I move them up, they can be raised up a tiny bit. Now, why is it like that? Well, the way the stove was designed, it's designed to be used with an alcohol stove inside and the pot rests at a lower level. And it, there's sufficient exhaust room around the top and maintains its peak efficiency. And I'm going to show you the inside again. Just the way this is designed, it was designed to accept, accept a small titanium siphon stove, which I have one I'll show you in a minute, and, and hold it right in the center. And it, it works very, very effectively. Yet when you want to use wood, then you raise those pot stands up and then you get some more exhaust area on the top of the stove. All right, let's go over some specifications for it. So in the total weight of the stove, and that's probably a good place to start, is 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. And of course, I'll put all this information in the video description below. The diameter across the base is 90 millimeters, which is 3.54 inches. The height is 100 millimeters, which is 3.93 inches. Now the internal combustion chamber is uh, 78 millimeters across, so a little bit smaller, obviously, and the internal height is 83 millimeters. And as I mentioned, I'll put all that information in the video description underneath so you can compare it against the other two stoves. What I'd like to do now is take you down to the fire pit where I'm going to be using this in a minute to, for a demonstration and show you how it would be used with an alcohol stove. All right, what I thought I would do is share with you how I carry the Goshawk uh, multi-fuel titanium stove. And I do so in my Tom Shoe titanium 750 milliliter pot. And it is a perfect fit for this. Let me take the lid off. As you can see down inside, now I also have my alcohol stove. Let me take that out. As you can see, it is actually designed to fit in there perfectly. And in fact, um, the Goshawk people do also sell a 750 milliliter pot, a little different design. It doesn't have a bale, doesn't have butterfly handles. It has a removable handle that would fold over the top in storage and then be used on the side to uh, use the pot otherwise. And it's designed specifically to go with this stove. But the dimensions of that pot are the same as this Tom Shoe or Lixata. This one is the Tom Shoe, but it's the same brand, Lixata stove. And uh, yeah, so it, we're, it fits identically. Now, I will show you in a second that you cannot, this is the smallest pot you can use um, securely with this stove. And you'll, you'll see that in a second. So let me take out the stove, put it aside. Now, I mentioned a minute ago that I use it with a small titanium alcohol stove. This is the, which one is this now? This brand is Thai Artisan. Um, but it's identical to the Lixata and the Tom Shoe versions of them. They are both copies of the Tox siphon hose, except that these are a tiny bit bigger. Now, if you're interested, I'll do a video specifically on the stove and my experiences with it. I actually have two. I do have a Lixata one as well. Uh, I have two of these, and that kind of tells you how much I think about them. I like them quite a bit, but that's not the focus of the video. But what I want to say is that Again, Goss Hawk has its own branded version of this stove, exactly the same size. It is a siphon design with capillary action bringing the alcohol up the outside and is designed to fit with this stove perfectly. So it drops down inside, as you can see. It lines up in the center of the stove and it's set at the ideal height uh, for uh, maximum efficiency with the pot. Now let me just put the pot on because I mentioned that this is not much room for error. As you can see on the pot stands there's not a whole lot of room for error. You, you know, you want to make sure that you get it centered properly. Now, anything larger with this than this uh, 750 mil pot will work perfectly, but this is as small as you want to go. But it does make a nice, compact, lightweight package when you put the two of them together. All right, so I did mention that I had done some testing with the alcohol stove. And what I was able to get with this, this specific alcohol siphon stove is I could get two cups of water to a boil with using one ounce of methanol. 
uh, methyl hydrate, I could get two cups of water to a boil in four minutes, 10 seconds, which is fast, very fast. Of course, it goes through the alcohol very fast. So in that whole one ounce of alcohol only lasted six minutes before it flame out. Now, there is another stove that I did try with this, and that was the Boundless Voyage. Uh, al titanium alcohol stove. It's the one that is identical in almost every way to the ever new titanium alcohol stove, except it doesn't have an internal wick. And I used that and it fits in perfectly. And again, two cups of water, one ounce of fuel, five minutes, 25 seconds to a boil, and uh, another six minutes, 25 seconds to run out. So um, it works very well, but maybe not quite as well as the Lixada does. Now the Trangia does fit inside of this. It will work. It is very tight. Uh, I did not do boil tests with it. And uh, what I can say is, of course, you could use it, but you're not going to be able to use the simmer ring. You can still snuff it, but you can't use the simmering to slow the burn down any. I can do some tests with that in the future if you're interested, just to show you what it works like with the uh, Trangia. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm going to set the stove up for use with wood, and we'll do a demonstration with that. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and pre-loaded the stove with uh, some small sticks. This is pretty much all maple in here. Some of you, you can see were a little larger in diameter that I had to saw rather than try to break with my fingers. And the rest I was able to break with my fingers and push in. Now the reason I chose to saw rather than break them is you're trying to make them small. You want them to, if ideally, to sit below the level of the secondary ports. It's not a big deal if some of them are above the ports, but you won't get full gasification until the burn gets down below those ports. And that's when you'll get peak efficiency. So yes, I've preloaded it in a vertically stacked fashion and I'm gonna be creating a small fire on top of this and that's the correct way to use a wood gas stove. And it's known as T-LUD, T-L-U-D, top lit up draft. So let's get this demonstration going. So I want the pot stands sitting upright and I'm going to be using a commercial fire starter. Uh, small stoves like this, just a little bit easier to get going. Plus the wood, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but when I left today to come out, it was three degrees Celsius, not very cold, but 99% humidity and foggy. So everything is damp, penetrating damp, cold. Uh, not an excuse, just an explanation how it's going to take a little more work to get that going. So I'll give that fire starter a chance to really get lit. It's a little bit reluctant, but it's starting to go now. And uh, yeah, these are the Bigfoot fire starters. I did a review on them a little while ago. They're, they're, they work well and uh, especially good for this. I shaved off a few pieces of pine to lay on top of that because I know that they will ignite nice and quickly. And so all I'm doing is just building a small fire right on top of the wood. And some little tiny twigs I also pulled off of a pine tree. They weren't snapping really well, but they should still light. So the same thing as any other fire, start with your smallest and then build your way up. But I won't have to do this for very long because once the little bit of a fire gets established, it'll start to move down into the main body of fuel. Um, you may notice that there was some smoke and that's very common when you first get any wood gas stove going until it really starts gasifying, it's not gonna be working at peak efficiency. Some little tiny pieces of, what are these? Can't tell if it's maple or oak. It's just a small little branch. I think this is, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's oak in fact. Build a little bit more. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. I'll just get this started and then what I'll let it do is really get going to the point where the secondary ports come into action. I think we're just gonna, gonna take very long. What I've discovered so far about this stove is that it has excellent airflow. It's well designed. I mean, it, this is a properly designed stove and uh, it has the right 
ratio of input inflow air to exflow air, if that makes sense. So the secondary jets are in the right rela relationship to the bottom of the, the fire grate in terms of the amount of oxygen you want to have entering here. Okay, so you can see I've got a little fire started up on top of the stove. And what I have to do for a few minutes is let that burn down into the fuel load. And then I'll give come back and give you a top-down view so you can see the gasification going. And of course, I'll put a pot on to boil some water. All right, and uh, full disclosure, it took me a little longer to get this fire really well established. Uh, I, apparently the wood inside, the sticks that I had, some of them were dry, some of them not so much. So what I ended up doing was building a little bit more of a fire on top of the fuel load. Eventually it dried everything else and uh, the flames are now moving down into the primary fuel load and you should be able to see the gasification taking place with what appears to be flames of fire coming in from the secondary ports which is really just superheated air combining with the combustible gases from the wood and igniting. So now we have an extremely clean, extremely efficient, very hot and you can't see it from this angle. I've got the camera well above it, but the flames are extending good 12 inches above the stove. What I'll do now is just back up and put the pot on so you can see the effect that has. From this angle, hopefully you can see the, the flames are reaching, uh, right now I'd say eight to 10 inches above, but almost invisible. No smoke whatsoever coming from this, which is really good to see. Just a nice, clean, efficient, burn that you expect from a wood gas stove. Let me put my 750 mil pot on. As I mentioned, you have to get this just right. If you don't, of course, it doesn't help that one of the little tabs has decided to go into the lower position. Easy fix, there we go, that's better. Now let's put it on. Now there's gonna be some smoke because there's some pine needles on the, the bottom of my pot. But you can see that, uh, very clean, no dampening of the flames whatsoever, which is really very clean. Like that's a perfectly clean burn. Just what you expect. Okay, the little bit of water that I have in this is gonna be a cup of hot chocolate for me. And uh, then when the fire is out, I will empty out the coals, let it cool, and it doesn't take very long to cool. Reload it with wood pellets and we'll come back and do a second test. All right, the stove cooled off and I have refilled it with wood pellets. This is one full cup of wood pellets. And you'll notice that they are just below the secondary porch. So that's exactly what this stove is designed to use is a maximum of one cup of pellets. Now to get this going, I am gonna put a little bit of my precious alcohol on, about half an ounce, not much. Doesn't take much, it takes a few minutes for everything to light up, but not too much alcohol is wasted. There, I heard it light. You won't be able to see the alcohol going for a while, but you can see how quickly that birch bark is going. So there's not a whole lot to see here for a few minutes. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes for the pellets to really get engaged and for a gasification to start. So, of course, just like the last time, I'll bring you back when that occurs. All right, about five minutes later after I lit it and the pellets are now engaged. And what I can see inside, and I'll show you a top-down burn, is just a little bit of smoke on top of the pellets. And that's the pyrolysis taking place before it ignites with the hot air from coming through the jets. And you get a perfectly clean burn. Now from this angle what I'll do is I'll put on the pot again so you can see it. I think once again I'm going to have to set the pot stands upright. That's one thing I have noticed about this is that you have to be conscious of the pot stands. They, If you move the stove around they will drop down. Now there may be stuff on the bottom of this pot again but you can see no dampening whatsoever. No smoke whatsoever. Nice and clean, just exactly what you want. Now, just for to demonstrate, I also have my 12 meter, 12 centimeter zebra pot with me, full of pine needles on the bottom. But let's put that on top, just for size comparison. So I would consider this a good match as well. It uh, fits the stove nicely. The stove would pack away inside of the 12 centimeter zebra just nicely. I don't know if I'd use a pot much bigger than this, but it uh, uh, works working right now, as you can see, very clean, very clean. Now I'm going to 
reposition the camera so that you can see the pellets engaged and uh, when the uh, pellets are all finished up and then we'll uh, have a few closing thoughts. Straight down from the top you can see just how clean and efficient a burn this is. What appears to be nice clean jets of flame coming in from all four all, all around the outside the secondary ports not one bit of smoke. Now I just want to mention this as well. You know I struggled with that wood to get it going as I admit it. That's reality. There was no sense trying to deny that. If you're out on a day like it is today where it was foggy and cold all night and the wood is damp and uh, you're going to struggle especially with a small stove I find they struggle to really get themselves established. This is why packing away one cup of hardwood pellets is going to save the day because this was just so easy. Pour them in, put a little bit of alcohol on, light it up, wait a few minutes and I have done testing in the past and from one cup of pellets with this stove I've been able to get 35 minutes of active flame from the pellets and then the pellets will extinguish as far as active flame but they will continue to produce usable heat for up to 55 minutes. So 35 minutes of flame, 55 minutes of usable heat. And what I mean by usable, a pot of boiling water continued to simmer right up until the end and then it started to slow down. So there was still plenty of heat for a long period of time. Uh, if you only used a half a cup of pellets you would get all the water you needed probably boiled for any meal you're making but that's what you can do with one full cup of pellets. Now it's going to take me a bit of time before these pellets are consumed and I'm able to finish this video off with some pros and cons and closing thoughts. All right so what are my thoughts on the Goshawk titanium multi-fuel stove? Well let's go over some of the pros on this thing and then there are a few cons and there are relative cons about it. To start with uh, you just can't beat the price you know for roughly 60 Australian dollars for a titanium wood gas stove that obviously had to be assembled by hand. This wasn't done by a machine itself. Um, I think that's a very reasonable price if you want to have something of this size made of that of this material. So yeah I, price is obviously the first point. What else do I like about it? Um, the size. Obviously it's a very small compact stove. However that same small size does come with some limitations as we saw and I'll talk about in a second. So I would say those are the things I like about it the most. Um, what do I dislike or I think could be improved? Well a couple of things. As I mentioned its small dimension means that it is going to struggle if your wood is not perfectly dry. Now that's true of all stoves but in particular wood gas stoves. They seem to struggle to get to that point of ignition or just below the point of ignition where the pyrolysis starts to take effect in the body of the fuel. So the smaller they are the more difficult they are to do that. Now the, the fuel amount that holds it, that this holds is fine in terms of getting some water, two cups, maybe even a liter of water to a boil quite easily without having to add any fuel to it. It'll do that. It's just you have to make sure your wood is dry and on a day like today I struggled. As I said I struggled. It worked. It just took a little longer to get to that uh, dryness that it needed to, to really get going. What else am I not so fussy about? Well you know these pot stands the design or the concept of them is great in that you have two varying heights high and low. Low for the alcohol stove, high for wood. The, that is a bit of a con in it though because as you saw what I found is that if I move the stove they had a tendency to want to flip over from high to low or low to high and if you didn't notice that when you go to put your pot on top then you're going to be lopsided. Maybe that's another relative con as well is that um, this I used it with the 750 milliliter uh, uh, titanium pot and it was as small as you could go with this. Now they are designed to work together in tandem and they do. It's just that you would not want to go any smaller in diameter for your pot because it will not rest securely on top of these pot stands. I don't know if this could have been done but either a fixed stand that doesn't move or a stand that folds in and out as opposed to on the diameter. If you could get one to fold in or out then you might be able to get it to sit a little bit more securely. 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe that would add cost and engineering to it that's not necessary. I'm not even sure that if they weren't just sitting in the permanent uh, upright in the upper position permanently that they would work just as effectively with the alcohol stove. I might actually do some comparison testing with those in the high and the low position to see how much of a difference it makes with the Lixata siphon stove. So maybe that's the other con is that you have to use a pot big enough to go with this and you have to make sure that the pot stands stay in the position for depending on which fuel you're going to use. I suppose the other thing I really really like about this is how well it works with wood pellets. Now wood gas stoves in general do work well with wood, with wood pellets. This stove just seems to work exceptionally well. One cup of pellets, I mean 25 minutes later I had to dump this out and let the pellets go out on their own because I was I had to get on to the next thing that I was going to do and I didn't want to sit and wait for the fuel to completely burn out so <clears throat> especially efficient with with wood pellets wood pellets alcohol and then wood I think that is the order in which I would recommend its usage Okay, um, long-term durability. I have no reason to think this is going to be any less durable than any other titanium stove. Now, here's the thing. I mentioned that there are some other titanium stoves in the same weight and class of stove as this one, but they vary in price greatly. Most of them are three to four times the cost of this one. I am going to put the information for those stoves in the show notes below. The unfair part is I can't compare them. I don't have them here to do a side by side. Maybe someday some of them I'll be able to afford, but uh, yeah, they're, that, they're just out of the question at the moment. Okay, that's really all I have to say about the multi titanium multi-fuel stove from Goshawk. Um, I'll give you the information where I purchased this and the links, and you'll see the other things that they have for sale there out of Australia. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions about this stove, if you have any comments, if you own one yourself, if you think I missed anything in the testing of the stove that you would like to see at a later time, put those all in the comments section below. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.